And here we are, sitting with our friend, Dr. Jeff King, talking about interesting topics. Today we're going to be talking about frank medical opinion. So there you is go. This, this is your frank medical opinion? <laughs> nope, I'm not a medical doctor, therefore <laughs> I can only give a chiropractic opinion. Okay. But as you know, I like to present information to help educate the public. And I bring to the table always literature, peer-reviewed scientific literature from medicine, chiropractic, osteopathic, wherever I can find it to help build the case for why chiropractic is relevant, right? especially as it impacts our health. So digging through all the stuff that I have at home and that I get on email and, and through the mail and such, I found something kind of old. That it was a collection of uh, pretty famous MDs, and they're giving their account of what they think of medicine as a scientific, mm -hmm. relevant health mm -hmm. field. Some of it is uh, over 200 years old. Medicine is 200 years old, chiropractic, nasty osteopathy are 100 years old. It was pretty fascinating. I think that uh, as a culture, as a scientific community, we have reached an impasse where we've seen the fall of things that we've conventionally held dear, like the Vioxx scandal. Uh -huh. Problems like that. Okay, well, all right, medicines are supposed to help us. Here we have a medicine that hurt a lot of people. All right. Now, this isn't a problem for me. It is a problem for everyone, especially for medics thinking, okay, who's producing our literature, number one, right? Mm -hmm. Can we believe the literature that's given to us? Hmm. Now, I have friends in the medical community where they've uh, come out and said things like this to me and others. Uh, okay, well, what do we do? Right. Then we have an educated public. That's the other part of the impasse. Okay. Do I always want a pill, potion, and lotion to help my symptoms? Why do I have the symptoms? Start asking these frank questions. So where then uh, do I go to help bring myself up health-wise before I reach the crisis point where I need medical intervention, surgery, drugs, stuff like that? And I think personally that's where chiropractic fits in is we start there, start with our knowledge, start with our internet, and start figuring it out for ourselves. I think the time of relying on uh, the medical men, the science men of our time is starting to fall away which I think is a healthy thing. I think that's good. So it means the individual is an advocate for themselves. Absolutely, which <clears throat> I've, I've always been a grassroots kind of guy, and I think that's fantastic. Uh, I've seen a change in my short time of practice where people come armed, mm -hmm. studies, right. internet right. stuff. Well, this says this, and this source says this. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that? Mm -hmm. So I, I'm sure everybody that's in practice, no matter what kind of practice they have, is faced with that too. Uh -huh. Yeah, and with the world of the internet, I mean, everything's accessible, but Instantly. you still have to weed out what's what's real and what's not real. Sure. But that adds to your job. I mean, the days of just coming in, we always use this analogy of cracking someone's back are gone. I mean, you really have to know your stuff and be at the top of your game. So you must spend a lot of extra hours kind of involved in research and things. All the time. And we're forced to 150 hours in the state of Illinois every three years. Hmm. But uh, I think to stay relevant just in your small area of the world, what, you, what your expertise is, it takes much more than that. So it isn't just the the medical profession or scientists that are finding out new things. Chiropractic doctors are as well, right? Sure, yeah. New remedies, new ways to approach a situation. Just like the Bible said, all old things become new again. These old premises that these these uh, uh, doctors from the past, osteopaths, medical people, chiropractors, are all becoming relevant and true. A lot of times uh, they had a concept, saw, applied it clinically, saw the result, didn't have any research didn't have the tools. Now there are, as I presented over and over in this program. It's all over the place now. So it's, a, it's an exciting time for people like me. That's good. Uh, do you see it as an either or, chiropractic versus medical science, I, I, or is it, are they complementary uh, forms of treatment? Good question. I always saw a continuum. I don't see either or. That's like a yes-no matrix to respond from. In my opinion, it's a continuum. We start at the least invasive, vitamins, health, diet, stress reduction, mm -hmm. obvious symptoms, problems. Check out a chiropractor, an osteopath, mm -hmm. massage therapist, whatever, nutritionist. That doesn't work. We're still getting sicker. Then, when we reach a, a crisis, that's the time to consult medical surgeon. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, I see connection versus camps. That's good. That's, mm -hmm. good that's, that's my personal approach. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, how did you happen upon this? Did you say you... Actually, a friend sent this to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> I have a lot of people in my clinic that are always asking me, well, well, uh, what does medicine think of chiropractic now and all this <laughs> exactly. kind of business? All the time. And, and I think, well, 
I don't know what they think, mm -hmm. frankly. Mm -hmm. I know I know that there's an enormous amount of research, and we can't deny that if we're going to be honest. Right, right. Honest with ourselves, right. honest with our patients. And uh, my friend sent this to me, and it's a collection of, of little quips, like one from Charles Mayo of the Mayo Clinic. Wow. He said that 85% of all internal operations done today are not only unnecessary, but harmful to the future health of the patient. That's pretty powerful stuff. 85%? He said 85%. <laughs> now, he's the one that started the Mayo Clinic. Yeah, so, so, he, so he might know what he's talking about, right? I don't know. Uh, a Nobel Prize winner, medical doctor, said medical science has left the race at the mercy of an ever-increasing array of incurable chronic diseases. I think that anybody that can take a good, strong stomach punch and look at what they're doing, their model, whether it's medicine, chiropractic, whatever it is, has to be able to say, is this helpful or not, right? And what are the, what are the outcomes, you see? That's science, you see. Is there ever a time when the two do clash, that well, one could hurt the other? Sure, chiropractors can hurt people, medical doctors can hurt people. But I mean that, that, that going, uh, I guess, if someone goes to a chiropractor for a problem mm -hmm. or, or a medical doctor for a problem, can you both treat in a way that the paths go in two different directions? Yes. Yes, that's true. Only because uh, the ideology is different. Chiropractic never seeks to take away. Mm. It seeks to build up, just like we learned about chemical, physical, mental. Mm. Try to bring those things up. That's old-fashioned, 100 years ago. <laughs> it's absolutely relevant now. Medicine is a little bit different. Its focus is to complement or implement or stop a process, either cover a symptom, stop a chemical process from occurring, something like that. So sometimes they can diverge, but by and large, they don't. They're, they're, they complement one another. You know, if your focus is to truly help a patient, then whatever, whatever is necessary is necessary. On these opinions and quotes, you said some of them go back more than 50 years, obviously. Oh, yeah. Well, Hippocrates was the father of medicine. Way back. The father of medicine, okay? He said, look well to the spine for the cause of disease. Ah. That's a powerful, powerful statement. Why? Because nervous system, right? Mm -hmm. It houses the nervous system. Brain, mm -hmm. spinal cord, nerves. Right. Pretty fascinating stuff. Uh, let's see. Another guy, Massachusetts General Hospital. Every educated physician knows that most diseases are not appreciably helped by medicine. Richard Cabot, MD. Fascinating. Why? Because most medicine is designed to cover a symptom or stop a process. No one knows how healing occurs. Nobody does. And a symptom, if you feel pain, it means that there's a problem. And if well, you're just yeah. masking it, then you're not addressing the problem? Yes. Or you, we're all working with, with the tools that we have. You know. If the only tool you have is a hammer, all you see are nails. That's the same for chiropractors, for osteopaths, MDs, anybody. Mm -hmm. you know. So you'll try with the tool that you have. We have a patient who has a system of potentialities, all kinds of problems and question marks. And you'd be hard pressed to figure out every single process in that human being. About 20 million processes chemically alone happening at every second. So. And what I love about you, Dr. King, you're so approachable and accessible. As a matter of fact, people can just fire off an email to you, right? Yep, all the time. If something comes up they saw on the internet, how do they contact you then? King Clinic at AOL.com. Very easy. I'll uh, reply within a few days. Uh, if they want to set up a consultation and meet with you, how do they do that? They can call the office at 641-0644. Great. Well, thanks, Dr. Kinger. Thank you. Highlight of our week. Thanks for joining us in oh, studio. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.